I'm Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. We know that you can't always be in worship with us, so we're glad to provide the sermons from our weekly services. We hope that you will find hope and inspiration as we have in Jesus Christ. And now, here's this week's message. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ. You may be seated. Over the past three weeks, I've been meeting with a group doing a Bible study, learning about what does it mean to read the Bible from a Lutheran perspective. I'm sure that any of the people who were in that class at any point would be happy to stand up right now and share what they've learned. But I won't ask them to. One of the important things we discussed was the need to understand the context for a reading, to put it in place in Scripture so that we can get a greater meaning from it. So we'll spend a little bit of time right now looking about looking at context and being intentional about understanding it for this reading from Luke's Gospel. Jesus' ministry in Galilee is now completed. It's a big shift from his daily ministry of teaching, healing, and uh, accompanying those in need. And now it, we move into a new section of Luke's Gospel. We're told that Jesus is now focused, perhaps even determined, to go to Jerusalem. In this reading comes on the heels of Jesus meeting with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus' perhaps extreme focus comes as a result of this encounter with the two great prophets, but his role is different than the prophets. He is the Messiah. Jesus has already begun to prepare his disciples for what is to come about his betrayal and subsequent death, and that happens some 30 verses before today's reading. The disciples will need to learn that they will face rejection and even persecution because they follow Jesus. And this will be a part of the journey to Jerusalem. So verse 51 is a turning point. It is literally a time where the story pivots. Jesus is on the move. Jesus' face is set toward Jerusalem. He is called to go there, and Luke's gospel narrative is happy to tell us about the journey. It's odd, though, that even though Jesus has this singular focus, he's on his way to Jerusalem, all the things that I've said already, there is little about the way that he gets there that makes sense, assuming he wanted to get there as quickly as possible. In fact, I'm guessing if there were somebody that had a GPS or Google Maps with them, they would constantly be recalculating with every turn. So what is Luke up to in this story? If it isn't a focus on geographically logical ways to get to Jerusalem and getting Jesus there as quickly as possible, what does the writer want us to hear? Well, it's a good question, and I'm glad you asked it. I assumed you were asking it, Troy. I saw you, you were like, I wonder, (laughs) right? Sometimes people will say that the point of getting to a place is the journey. Have you heard that before? Oh, it's all about the journey and the fact that I have really terrible directions, right? I can't get there from here. Luke wants us to know something important about who Jesus is, about Jesus' character, and about the character and nature of God, the one who sent Jesus into the world with a mission to accomplish. 
There are two stories within the reading today. In the first, a Samaritan village refuses to receive Jesus on his journey. And whether that's because he has such a focus on getting to Jerusalem and may not want to pay much attention to the Samaritans, or it's because of the rift that has existed between the Jewish people and the Samaritans over time. Well, we really don't know for sure, but in any event, this lesson begins an opportunity for the disciples to learn something. James and John are mad that the Samaritans would not receive Jesus. Another bit of context is James and John, along with Peter, are the ones who were with Jesus on that mountain, who saw Jesus transfigured, who sat in the presence of these great prophets. So maybe, just maybe, James and John are feeling a little defensive about the Samaritans' seeming response to Jesus. Maybe, just maybe, they want to make a point of these Samaritans and show them a thing or two, right? We can get that way sometimes, can't we? Do we ever get a little defensive about our faith if we hear someone talking badly about it? We want to show them how wrong they are, right? I wonder if James and John are feeling that way. But Jesus had just told the disciples a few verses ago that they were not to be vengeful. That if they were not received in a place, that they should leave that place and do what? Do you remember? Shake the dust from that place off of their shoes. Fair enough. Lesson in the character of Jesus. Don't be vengeful. But what about the second part of this reading? Jesus seems to be telling the ones who would follow him that if they want to do so, they best get on with it and stop screwing around. And that's hard for the ones Jesus addresses in this reading, and it's hard for us today, isn't it? What are we to hear in these words from Jesus? What does the writer of Luke want us to understand about the character of Jesus and the nature of God who sends Jesus into our world? Well, first, I think that the emphasis in this reading points to the critically important mission that Jesus has. Nothing is more important than this mission, not even burying a family member or certainly not saying goodbye to family. But as we discussed in our Bible study, doesn't Jesus also call us to honor our families? Interesting contrast. Second, if the writer of this gospel wants us to learn something about the nature and character of God, of Jesus, I think that we would do well to consider why Jesus is so focused on going to Jerusalem. Writer and pastor David Lowes puts it this way, Jesus' commitment is to embrace the cross for the sake of the world. The heart of these passages is neither the road of discipleship nor Jesus' heroic courage in facing the cross, Rather, it is a single-mindedness of purpose that is prompted by God's profound love for humanity and for all the world. God's all-encompassing love is highlighted in these passages by the rejection of violence against the Samaritans, which is not compatible with God's love. Lois goes on to say, similarly, those who would embrace and be embraced by the radical love of God made known in Jesus and his cross must necessarily see that this love is contrary to all human conceptions of love. Everything, friendship, family connections, discipleship, all look differently through the lens of God's sacrificial love. This speaks to the nature and character of Jesus. That speaks to the character and nature of God. What does the writer of Luke want us to know Love. So let's focus on the love of God for us in Jesus, his single-minded purpose, his calling to Jerusalem and the cross, his death and resurrection, his love for you comes before anything else that we can possibly conceive of, anything else that might distract us. And in this, we are recipients of the greatest gift of all, eternal life. And that is good news for those early followers of Jesus. And it is most decidedly good news for us today. Amen.
Thanks for listening to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. If you're ever in the Dubuque land area, please join us for worship. Visit our website at www.lordoflife.online to learn more about service times and about our vision for serving God and our community. God bless you.